Uh, here we are on PTI Live with Ryan, Chris, and uh, Bjorn. We're talking about the college basketball sleepers this year. First, we're going to start with Ryan. Who do you think is going to be the sleeper this year? I'm going to a lot of teams people expect to be good, but they didn't make March Madness last year, and that's the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. They brought in two, the top two and three of the ESPN Top 100 high school rankings in Dylan Harper. No, yeah, Dylan Harper and Ace Bailey, and they have the returner of Jeremiah Williams, who I think is going to help them a lot. And I think they're going to be a scary team heading into March Madness. Those are some very valid points from Ryan. I'd like to hear what Chris has to say. Uh, my pick to be a sleeper this year is going to be the Syracuse Orange. They did lose one of their best players in Malik Brown to Duke, but they brought in a five-star Donnie Freeman from IMG and a couple of key transfers that are going to make them have a huge run in March Madness this year. Those are also some valid points. What do you think, Bjorn? I feel like one that stands out more of a sleeper than Rutgers and Syracuse, who are established teams and programs, is St. Joe's basketball, and they were good like 20 years ago, but for the past 10 years they haven't been good. Uh, they lost two of their players that didn't really help them this year, but played a lot, which in part of because of the coach who wasn't the greatest. But with Xavier Brown, a uh, sophomore guard, uh, he'll feel a lot more free on the court and play better. Also bringing in some 6'11", 6'7", uh, recruits and a few transfer guards, which really helped them get their play style to what they want it to be, and it'll excel. That's a, that's some good points, Bjorn. What do you think about what do you like feel about like Ryan sweeper pick? Do you think like since his team has already been good a lot, do you think it's more of a sleeper? Or I don't you? really understand how you're a sleeper team if you have two of the top ten players in the country, like Dylan Harper and Ace Bailey are. I'm pretty sure Dylan Harper's like four in the country. Ace Bailey's like three or something. So that's matter of fact, two of the top five, and you're calling them a sleeper. Sleeper to me is a team that doesn't have the biggest names, but they come out on top. Well, I mean, I think sleeper in that they're going to make, like, the Elite Eight Final Four. Like, they're going to be, like, a good team actually headed into the headed into the college basketball championship, which a lot of people don't expect from them, even, even though they're already solidified to be a good team. What do you think? Well, I, I think I don't, I don't agree with that at all. I don't think that Rutgers has what it takes. Two five-star recruits that are going to be freshmen, if one of them doesn't show up, there's just no way that it can happen. And I just don't think that they have the roster to go to the Elite Eight. I mean, I think Rutgers, they've shown that they can be there. And I think, although they might not have the experience as others, I think, I mean, we've seen that uh, Dylan Harper and Ace Bailey, they're, they're great players. And I think that they're, they're going to show the world how good they truly are. But there's tons of players who are five-star recruits, four-star recruits who fumble as soon as they get into their freshman or sophomore years in college. So they don't have a big enough roster. If one of them can't hold all the load, then how are they going to make an Elite Eight run? I have a question about your Syracuse. Do you really think consistently Syracuse can like have good productivity throughout the year? I feel like every year they end up falling throughout the year. And they, just get worse and worse. In the last couple of years, yeah, they have had some struggles after first 10, 15 games when they get to ACC play. But this year, they have a deeper roster. They brought in five big recruits. Now they lost mm -hmm. Malik Brown, which was their biggest loss to Duke. But and having a five star come in is they have they have a big enough and like strong enough roster to absolutely even win a national championship if they can make a huge run. What do you think about the coaching at Syracuse? Like, is that really at the high level you need it to be? Yeah, I absolutely think so. Who's the coach? Dude, what is that, bro? <laughs> okay, so I feel like St. Joe's, they're just very good, and they got off to a rough start last year, um, which was difficult for them, but they bounced back, won some close games, lost some close games, and ended up not being able to win the A-10. But as long as they win the A-10 as a high seed, that'll be good. I have a question, Chris. Why are you avoiding the coaching question? Bro. Are you not are you not satisfied with the coaching? Yo, can we ask Bjorn a question? <laughs> yeah, ask me a question. <laughs> do you really think your team will, will be able to make a big run during March Madness? I do. I feel like the chemistry is there as they've bonded over the past couple of years and just sticking together as a team with Eric Reynolds, also a high NBA prospect. I think he averaged like 22 points a game last year. And head coach Billy Lang, um, he's not the greatest at all times, but he seems to be really developing and – Finding his play style. I mean, well, what do you think the max seed that they're going to get in the March Madness? In March Madness? Yes. 
Well, I don't think they're going to get a. I think they're going to get in off winning the A-10, so somewhere around, like, 11. So you're saying that if they don't win the A-10, then, then it's not going to be in it? No. Well, I'll say this. An A-10 team, whenever they get in March Madness, like Dayton in the past years and stuff, they never show up. So I just don't think that they can make a huge run. Okay. I think we're going to go to commercial break, but that was a nice PTR, guys.